What would you need in your life for you to be happy you were alive? Such a great question posed by Dr. Jordan Peterson. This is episode 1070, the Joe Rogan Experience. I'm Coach Colin, coolest high performance coach in the world. And he's asking this question as he's kind of giving us little insights on how to restructure or build our lives. And then what I'm going to do is kind of give you a little bit more into how you can do that because it's such an important thing for us to focus on as men, as people, as as members of a community that we want to elevate. Let's get into it. Coach Colin, coolest high performance coach in the world. I said that. Hit subscribe button. I said that. Let's go. Talking yes. about that. Okay, so now I'll come up and I'll start talking about that. I'll say, look, like, wh what should you do with your life? Um, well, take care of yourself, but take care of yourself in a way that also means that simultaneously you're taking care of your family and that and also means that simultaneously you're taking care of the broader community so that's kind of your goal so orient yourself towards that personal success but in a way that your success breeds success because if you're going to establish a name why not establish like a really good aim that's a good one it's good for you it's good for everyone else yes okay that'll give your life some meaning now adopt make a plan generate a vision that's what the future authoring program helps people with make a Develop a vision of what your life could be like if if it was worth living despite all its suffering It's like what would you need so that you would be happy to be alive? You'd find your life meaningful So you don't get all bitter and resentful and cruel and hostile and ideologically addled and like murderous and genocidal It's like none of that You think real hard How would you have to configure your life so that despite its suffering and the malevolence that's part of it that you would regard it as worthwhile? So that's up to you to develop a vision then put a plan into practice and so when I talk to people about this, and most of my audiences are young men, it's probably about 65, 35, more and more women are showing up, but that's about what it is right now. The halls are dead silent. You could hear a pin drop because nobody's said so clearly for like 50 years that almost all the meaning that you will need to get you through the hard times of your life is going to be a consequence of adopting responsibility, not of rights and impulsive action, impulsive freedom. Fine, rights, yeah, got it. Freedom, no problem. Even freedom to do impulsive things, fine. But that isn't where you're going to find the meaning that keeps you sustained through the storms of life. That's going to be, you take care of yourself, you take care of your intimate partner, you take care of your damn family, you don't run off, you take care of your community, you rescue the wisdom from the past, you stand up straight and you be courageous despite the fact that life is tragic and tainted by malevolence. It's like that's the that's ancient wisdom that's what that is and understanding that there's structure i love that and joe, and joe rogan has some other stuff to say he says he, he says that there's structure in discipline and he actually means that there's freedom in discipline and then he just talks about you know himself about yeah you know, martial arts and stuff um but i wanted to focus on jordan peterson for this clip and just the things that he talks about in terms of you know, taking care of yourself, right, in in a way that's good, taking care of your family. And then I, I believe he says, vicariously, when you do that, you take care of your community. And that's so true. And if I had to pull from the other side of that, of how when you don't take care of your family, the way that he brought up, you don't run off. Like my dad wasn't around. Um, so he wasn't taking care of himself in a good way, couldn't take care of his family, um, even though he had like a broken up family of like, you know, different kids, different women, everything like that. But he wasn't taking care of, let's just focus on me, my family. He wasn't taking care of that family. And by extension was not taking care of that community because then I became, I don't want to say a poison to the community, but as I was growing up, I became very violent. And obviously when you're violent and you're running around, you're in your own community doing these things i i also ended up engaging in all sorts of illegal activity and that was also in my community so it really does the way that you take care of yourself really does impact your community far more than you think so when he brings up taking care of yourself taking care of your, um, your significant partner taking care of your family and then vicariously through that, taking care of your community, keep uh, taking care of yourself in a way that benefits your community. It's so true. 
And a lot of the times, I think every time, and this is only my first time really thinking about it, we don't really see how our actions of how we take care of ourselves every day are affecting our community. It's like if everybody engages in illegal activity in a community, what does that community look like? Well, it looks like, you know, a hood or a ghetto or a place where there's a lot of organized crime. It doesn't look like a great community. It becomes one of those areas that are bad. It becomes a bad area, right? And it's funny because we always talk about bad areas. We talk about the areas to stay away from. And it's not the area. It's not the soil that's bad. It's every single person in that community and how they take care of themselves, vicariously how they take care of their family, and then that ends up building the community or breaking it down. I just never thought of that, so that was something I wanted to throw out there. But then back to that question that he asked about what would you need in your life to, 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 for you to be happy you were alive? That is such a great question. And again, he talks about the Futuring Authoring Program. Like, if you haven't done it, if you if you don't know what it is, it's a uh, futureauthoring.com. I'm pretty sure I have it in the description. Um, click that link. At least check it out. Like, I'm not telling you to buy it. This is not an ad. I don't get paid for this. But at least check out what it's about. Um, it's really, really beneficial. I'm I'm on the verge of doing it myself. I've been lacking. I've been slacking. I'll be honest. But even just taking that one question, what would it take? What would you need in your life for you to be happy you were alive? Even if you just write that at the top of a page and then list some things off. It's so beneficial because it it shows you it shows you what you actually need in your life. It shows you what you actually want in your life. And then it gives you a bit like a it gives you almost like a leisure. It's almost like. It gives you a bit of a roadmap of who you need to become because that becomes the next question. Like, these are the things that you need. Do you have these things? If you don't, why not? And the why not becomes, obviously, every single time, it's going to be because you're not putting the work in. If you're not putting the work in, well, then you're a person that doesn't exactly deserve these things that are on your list. How do you become that person? there's work to be done. So you have to grow into that person. As you grow into that person, you'll now start getting the things that are on that list, or at least you'll now have the confidence and the fortitude to actually go after the things that are on that list. And that will give your life meaning. You'll be chasing something. It's it's like, man, I keep talking to people about writing things down. And and I believe me, I need to do it more myself. Like I have a, I have, well, it's actually right here. It's actually right here. This this journal. It says my life. It's my life journal. And these are like, I just write out, like I've written out some things about, you know, where my money comes from and how I make that money and what I'm doing in the world. You know, it says stuff like, you know, I'm a sought after public speaker, um, that I have a one-on-one coaching program and people love it, you know, in, in not so many words. I'm a best-selling author, stuff like that. Like, like you actually have to write this stuff down. Like I'm not, I'm not playing around. Like, like I wrote a page, like it's your life. And then I wrote like another half page and that's, that's nothing, but it's like things like that are essential. And then I have another one. It's like a gratitude journal. Yeah. I know my, my buddy, Chris, he's going to look at me and be like, yo, you need to stop writing in these, these shitty notebooks. But like, that's all I got right now. But I just bought this one and I'm going to start writing in it. It's leather bound. Shout out to my boy, Chris. He inspired me. He made me raise my standards from notebooks to like leather bound stuff. So it's like you need to write things down. I'm telling you, it'll benefit you so much because once it's written down, you can go back to it and look at it and be like, am I doing these things? Oh, I oh, I you can look at something like on, on the on the best on the best scenario, you'll look back and be like, oh, I have one, two, three, four, five of these things. Oh, oh, I am changing. I am becoming that person. I, I just think if everybody did that right now, just write, take a sheet of paper. What would I need in my life for me to be happy I'm alive? For some people, it's going to be, for most people, it's going to be a gut punch. 
because you're going to realize that you don't have those things. And it's going to only be because you haven't gone out to get them. It's going to be your fault. But again, I've said this before, the beautiful thing about all of it being your fault is that all of the power for it to change is in your hands. So again, again, I'm going to say it. What would you need in your life for you to be happy you're alive? I'm out.